Arizona Senator Jeff Flake also wants Congress to take action. The Republican is proposing laws to ban bump stocks and prevent individuals who are on the no-fly list from buying guns. Flake also introduced a bill to raise the minimum age to buy assault weapons from 18 to 21. Senator Flake is with us here for an interview you'll only see on CBS this morning. Good morning, Senator. Hey, thanks for having me on. You here. Before we get into the spe specifics, I want to speak more generally about the president. Right. He said in that meeting, I think it's time that a president stepped up. Is he now on your side? Is he going to step up? And what would that need to look like? I hope he does. His uh, leadership here is really critical if it's going to get uh, through the House and the Senate. We had a similar meeting on immigration uh, that I was at, and we heard a lot of good things uh, that Tuesday, and by Thursday, a lot of it had been walked back. I hope this time, and I do think there's a better chance this time, that the president will lead and, and really get out front on this. And there are a couple of items that we can uh, make progress on. And what does leadership look like? Does it mean I, he has to say, I want A, B, C, and D to pass? Does it mean getting on the phone and, and calling Republicans? What does it exactly look like? Oh, oh, certainly the latter, to get on the phone and, and say, hey, I'm going to sign this if it comes to my desk. That gives uh, Republicans in Congress cover. If the president is on their side, they don't have to worry so much about uh, um, activist groups or the NRA or, or uh, grassroots organizations that, uh, that may think differently. So it's extremely important for the president to lead here. What did you make of that meeting, though, yesterday, Senator? I, I saw a lot of people use the word that they were astonished. I saw an interview with you where you said, I don't know if we got a Tuesday Trump or a Wednesday Trump. Right. What did you make of what you were hearing and seeing? Well, it was remarkable for him to say, hey, you know, put this as part of the bill. Why don't you have this as part of the bill? Uh, most remarkable was his statement on due process. Uh, anything that we have introduced uh, in the Congress respects due process. You've got to do that. So it was a bit astonishing to hear uh, his language there. And people around the, we're shaking the table were kind of shaking their heads. But you can, you can chalk that up to just, he misspoke. Let's move ahead. So I, I think there was a lot of excitement afterwards that he might actually lead on this, and we need that. Se De Senator, the, the president also said the NRA has great power over right. you people. You were endorsed by the NRA right. in 2012. You accepted campaign donations from them. What is it going to take to break the spell between certain members of Congress and the National Rifle Association? Well, like, like most of my colleagues, sometimes I agree with the NRA, sometimes I don't. I've always supported, and in the past, have supported, uh, uh, for example, the no fly, no buy. Uh, the NRA has been adamantly opposed to that. I believe they still are. Uh, so I think that, uh, but now having the president say, I'm okay with these things, will will mean a lot to some that of my could colleagues. That break the spell. For me, I'm not running for re-election, obviously, freed from uh, those kind of concerns. But I have to say, in the past, uh, I've supported a lot of measures that the NRA has not supported. And now that you're not running for re-election, do you feel more empowered to speak up against the NRA and the president in oh, sure. ways that you didn't feel you could do before? Oh, you bet. It goes without saying that uh, you're freed of political considerations. And that's one of the things that led me to, to make this decision. Um, I didn't want to go for this last year, um, you know, just uh, beholden to, to one, the time involved with fundraising and everything else. I thought it was important that somebody stand up. And I'm very concerned about the direction of the administration on a number of issues, and uh, I thought somebody needed to stand up. Let me ask you this question about raising the age to 21. The Washington right. Post did some counting here and found that of the 153 mass shootings since 1966, only 18 of them were, were committed by people under the age of 21, and I think the number is even smaller right. who used assault weapons of the kind you're trying to limit. Right. So that seems like a very small portion of this larger question we're trying to fix here. Well, I think you'll get a small portion there. The bump stocks have only been used once in one shooting, but it was a, an awful, awful shooting. That needs to be done. If you do the no-fly, no-buy list, uh, you've taken care of another segment. Uh, so I think there are a number of things that we can do, and if we do them all, I think will make a difference. Let me ask you about the bigger question of gun violence in America. Uh, one of the things that some people would like is more study by the CDC and other to cover it like a health issue. Right. Is that something you would support? Yes, I would. I think that there are things that, uh, that can be useful to legislators as we make decisions. And, uh, you know, findings of the CDC would be helpful in that regard. So Congress would have to undo a law to yeah. allow that to happen. And, and I think that they, they can and will on this. I'm fascinated. I, your answer about, yeah, I feel more empowered now to speak up. But why is it? I've heard Republicans who are in office now say what we're seeing is crazy town and they're not speaking up even when they disagree with the president. Why don't people who disagree feel that they cannot stand up and speak up against him? One, it's uh, the pure volume of it. Um, I mean, if you 
were asked or if you answered every time the press is saying, what do you make of the president's latest tweets? It gets tiresome. It mm -hmm. frankly does. And so a lot of it isn't just that they're afraid to speak out. It's just that they want to spend their time on other things. And you could go day after day just responding to the president or the latest uh, you know, whatever it is coming out of the White House. Senator, we would be remiss if we didn't ask you about DACA and the fate of the 700,000 right. young men and women who are waiting to see what happens on immigration. Can you tell us anything? Well, I, you know, this we tried. We had a good week of debate and, uh, and went nowhere. Um, we have sort of a deadline coming up, March 5th, but the courts have ruled uh, that uh, these kids can't be restricted from renewing. So uh, without a real deadline, it's going to be tough to move no forward. Pressure. I've introduced legislation along with Heidi Heidkamp that says, uh, all right, we'll have three years of extension of DACA. We'll codify DACA so it's constitutional in exchange for three years of the president's budget request on the border. So it's, it's I think, a reasonable trade. I hope that the White House will take that up and uh, at least will give three years extension and, and more certainty for these kids. I think, frankly, right now it's probably the best we can do. Yeah. But you, you are heading up to New Hampshire for an event that's described as meeting with business leaders with a chance to meet with major party presidential candidates. Hmm. Should we take anything be? about that about your plans for 2020? No. I got an invitation I accepted it. <laughs> oh, oh, very Senator, Nobody goes to New Hampshire <laughs> who's in politics just it's for an, the... It is a nice state, but it, it it is there are other nice mitigating factors. You could always say, I can't go, I have a pedicure in Peru, <laughs> yeah, so that's right. you don't have to accept could've. every invitation. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And we'll next holiday in Iowa. That's yes, right. right. Exactly. It's lovely in January. Senator Jeff Flake, right, leaving right. the Senate, but not American politics. Great to see you. Thanks for your time. Thank you all. Thanks, <laughs>